Hey guys, welcome to Silicon Valley Girl. This is Marina from San Francisco, California. And today we're gonna talk about most in-demand jobs in the United States in 2020. And before we start, please, please, please hit the like button because that's the only way for me to see if you're enjoying this content. If you're not yet subscribed to Silicon Valley Girl and if you're interested in personal development, uh, taking new opportunities in your life and learning about exciting things from Silicon Valley, then hit the red button down below to not miss my next videos. If you watch this video up to the very end, you're gonna learn about 10 job positions that are in high demand in the United States, which means there are a lot of openings on different websites across different platforms. That means if you have skills, required for that position, you have really good chances of being employed and getting high salary. By the way, this ranking is based on median base salary, number of job openings, and overall job satisfaction. So there are different criteria uh, that are taken into consideration in this ranking. So please make sure you watch and listen carefully. We're gonna go from least demanded, well, there are top 10, so we're gonna go from least demanded to most demanded. And number 10 is business development manager. What does that mean? Business development manager is basically somebody who's looking for new opportunities for a company. And uh, another way to call it, you can call it B2B salesperson. So he's not really making the sale, but he's doing all the research. So if you're working for a big company and uh, you're providing IT solutions to another company, your daily tasks as a business development manager would be attending networking events, visiting other companies' offices, learning about their needs, creating their portfolio, and then if they're ready to make a purchase, you're gonna connect them with your sales team. So you're basically researching opportunities and conducting field work for your internal sales team. There are certain skills that are required for this job. You would need to love to talk to people. Uh, you have to be a good networker. Uh, you have to be excited about your product. Salary for this position is $78,840. And there are 6,560 job openings right now. The ideal education for this job position would be uh, bachelor's in business or bachelor's in economics. The next job position is strategy manager. And this is not an entry level or mid-level position. Strategy manager is somebody who's able to analyze incoming data, analyze different trends on the market and come up with a strategy for a company. And if you're a strategy manager, you would normally report to the CEO or COO or even the founders of a company if it's a small startup. Well, small startups don't really have strategy managers. If we're talking small startup, the CEO is normally a strategy manager. But there are some skills that are really crucial for this position. First, you need to be good with data and ideally you want to use some software that would analyze big amounts of data like eViews. This is something I've used when I was at the university. They taught us how to work with big data. And uh, you would need to know the current trends in the market. You have to be really a market expert. So probably you have 10 plus years of experience on this market. And you need to be able to come up with goals for a company and not just goals out of the blue. They have to be realistic. Because if you set the goals that are too high, your employees are gonna be uh, discouraged and they won't be uh, interested in performing well because they would know that the goals are too high. Salary for strategy managers is $133,000 and there are currently 3,515 job openings. Ideally, you have bachelors in economics, you have bachelors in uh, mathematics, something that's related to economics, and the candidates with an MBA degree are really, really preferred. Now, if you're not interested in IT or being a manager analyzing data, there is a job opportunity called speech language pathologist. And this is a person who is helping people with uh, speaking disabilities. Uh, they help them develop their speaking skills. A lot of those professionals would work with hospital and different clinicians to conduct research. Um, they will work directly with patients. And this job position has over 29,000 openings right now. If you become a speech therapist, the minimum salary would be over $71,000 a year but you're also required to have a master's degree in a related field, like master's degree in speech pathology. Now with the next profession, I'm gonna be super boring, but I just have to mention it because yeah, it's still in high demand and uh, will probably be in high demand for the next 10 years, software engineer. 
But what I'm noticing right now is there is a huge trend that your software engineer, the, the one that would be high paid, would need to be more specialized in um, actually writing a code and creating different algorithms that will work because there are so many apps out there uh, that can do anything for you. Like you can create a website in a couple of clicks. You can create a survey in a couple of clicks. You can shoot uh, automated email campaigns in a couple of clicks and you don't need a developer for that. So those basic things are actually automated with software already. So in order to be a successful software engineer, you need to make sure you can actually write something like that app. So it's not just, you know, putting a web page together. It's no longer uh, putting an email together and making it look beautiful with an HTML. Uh, it's really software engineering. So you need to be really interested and really passionate about what you're doing. Uh, bachelors in software engineering, bachelors in mathematics, bachelors in IT, uh, whatever is more related and more applicable to the path that you want to choose. And the minimum salary would be over a hundred thousand dollars a year currently over 50,000 job openings I guess a lot of them are here in Silicon Valley Texas is another great hub New York is a great hub uh, where um, a lot of headquarters are based Seattle is home to Microsoft and Amazon so look at those cities if you're looking for a job as a software engineer and by the way it's projected that the demand for software engineers would increase by 21% in the next nine years so you have a bright future out there guys before we move on to next professions, uh, I want to tell you about something that is not on the list, but I see it being in high demand. Uh, we're talking about social media, we're talking about uh, creating content for YouTube, creating content for any video platform, because they've been growing steadily. TV has been declining. It's not in this list because companies are not really hiring those people. Those people who have talent um, to create content they just work for themselves. They probably form an S corp or like sole proprietorship. I have an S corp, um, and they just work for themselves. So uh, there is no like market for YouTubers. But if you think that you can create content, if you really like being in front of the camera and uh, you're a professional at some field and you really want to share your knowledge then you know starting a YouTube channel could be a profession for you. Maybe you're not that excited about coding. Maybe you're not excited in managing other people and you're more excited about being on your own and talking to a camera. So this is a job opportunity for you. And in terms of salaries, people, I know people who make millions on YouTube. So if you wanna start, um, I have a course, uh, the link is down below, please check it out. Just give it a try and uh, for me, it's not only talking to you, it's also my personal skills. Like I've become a lot better at speaking publicly. I've become a lot better at delivering information that I have in my mind and finding the right words. Um, so yeah, the link is below. Please take my course. And I'm going to teach you how to start a channel in 14 days. The next profession is data engineer. And there is so much data generated every day, uh, generated online. And uh, you need somebody to analyze all of this data. Like take my business, LinguaTrip. We have thousands of customers from different countries and they have different patterns of behavior. Some come from YouTube, some come from Instagram, some start with a small purchase like they buy our um, online course and then some of them buy a trip. And this ends up in being hundreds of thousands of transactions every year. And we need a data engineer who would structure this information in a way that I can understand it because just looking at Google Analytics, just looking at uh, different data points in our internal uh, system that tracks everything doesn't make any sense for me. And this guy has a really high salary compared to others in our company. He takes all the data, I tell him which reports I want to see, and he presents it in a way so that I can act upon it, create a plan for a company, make decisions based on that data. His salary for data engineers is over $100,000. It currently has 6,000 900 openings and you need a bachelor's or master's degree in computer science engineering or related subject. The next job is DevOps engineer and yes there are a lot of jobs in engineering IT that are in high demand because guess what everything is moving online. What does DevOps engineer do? DevOps engineers are expected to work with software developers, operators of systems, production stuff to oversee the release of code. Engineers are expected to have both soft and hard skills to get rid of traditional barriers existing between software development, operation and testing teams. They're also expected to flawlessly manage IT infrastructure where it requires software support. So basically if you have an engineering team and the guys are really good coders, 
uh, but they don't know which tools they want to use. Like for example, which payment processor do we use for this exact operation to work with this country? And they go to DevOps uh, engineer and DevOps engineer says, okay, um, Stripe is a good a way to process payments for a platform. I'm being really basic here, but I just want you to understand what this concept means. So DevOps engineer is the ones who comes with kind of strategic solutions for the engineering team. Also, DevOps engineer will be in charge of backing up the code. He would tell guys, we need to back up this month or we have a security breach and this is how we solve it. And he would basically give tasks to engineers. So you really have to be a good leader and you have to be a good specialist in your field. Salary is $107,000 and 6,600 job openings. And in terms of education, bachelors in IT, engineering or a relevant field. The next one is my favorite. If I hadn't become an entrepreneur, I would have become a product manager. Product manager is like an entrepreneur within a company. For example, Linguatrip, we have online courses and we have a product manager for online courses. And she basically supervises the whole department because she's responsible for coming up with a product. Like we need to launch this, this and that course. This is based on uh, regular surveys that we do with students. Next thing she does, she works with guys who actually create a script for the course. Then she works with the team who films the course, then she works with an editing team and then she comes up with a marketing plan and works together with our social media team and the marketing team. Like for example, she tells them that the right way to promote this intermediate to advanced uh, English language course is to focus on advanced vocabulary, give people some advanced vocabulary and then we're going to integrate uh, this promotion. So basically it's like being an entrepreneur um, with the difference that you don't have to hire those teams because they're normally within the company. So whenever you come to a company and uh, you work as a product manager they tell you that here are some departments that you're going to be in touch with and that you're going to work with yes sometimes you would need to hire people for your product like customer support or maybe like an internal marketing specialist but mostly it's like coming to a company with the, the resources ready for you out there you don't need to invest your own money but then you have all the creative power of working on a product launching it to the market maybe shutting it down if it doesn't work or developing side products if it really really works and there are thousands of product schools out there there are thousands of courses that you can take online uh, and uh, this is something i'm really excited about as well and the base salary is one hundred seventeen thousand dollars uh, 12,000 uh, job openings and if you have bachelor's in business and an mba you're an ideal candidate the next job is very similar to data engineer. This is called data scientist. And I would say the major difference here is that data engineer knows how to structure information. While data scientist is more focused on analyzing that information and uh, driving different conclusions. Like when you have a lot of data, one of the researches that I really like uh, was conducted by one of the students that I know in, in Maryland. So he did a research on how air conditioning Florida affected the GDP of, of the state because people started to work more uh, they started to work like eight hours a day they didn't get so tired that was a very interesting research so and he did it as data scientists so he took all the information analyzed it and he was able to drive different conclusions because you have so many data points you have like when air conditioners got invented how many of them were installed every single year um, how population grew so there are so many data streams and uh, he just needed to analyze them in a way that he can find correlations and drive conclusions salary is one hundred seven thousand dollars over six thousand openings and bachelor's in mathematics statistics computer science or related field would really help and the guy that I was talking about he was actually doing his PhD and if you have a PhD this would really help you in becoming a data scientist because it's more about like diving deep into information and finding those things that seem to correlate the next job is Java developer and Java is used in a lot of applications that we use on desktop on mobile a lot of client-based services a lot of websites are powered by Java like their backend whatever you sees happening when you're looking for a flight or when you're booking a hotel uh, a lot of those algorithms a lot of those programs are actually powered with Java and uh, there is a high high demand and this is why it's number two on my top 10 uh, in most in-demand jobs for 2020 16,000 job openings currently on the market and again it's bachelor's in IT 
you get bored with this bachelor in IT, right? But guys, if you have passion for maths, if you have passion for physics, IT, uh, data, just throwing out ideas on you uh, and uh, getting you inspired about job opportunities that you might get if you go ahead and follow that path. And by the way, uh, for many um, jobs out there, yes, bachelor's in IT would be ideal, but if you're just starting out and you don't have four years to pursue a full degree, you can always take an online course. You can always take a course at a local coding school that would connect you to a future employer and normally those courses last maybe like four to five months so you don't have to be super profound to start working in that field um, you need to have some basics then you start working and then maybe in two years um, you go back uh, to studying and uh, improve your skills and get a better position later job number one front-end engineer whenever you see a website whenever you click on an application uh, whatever you see as a user is actually created by a front-end engineer not only this guy codes the design how everything is laid out on the website he also connects everything with the back end so when you click on a button an action happens um, whenever you submit a form it actually goes into a database which is in the back end so all of that connecting all of that and presenting you with something that is really good looking really easy to navigate through uh, really easy to use that's the task of a front and engineer and in terms of salary it's 105 thousand dollars over 13,000 openings right now and uh, you would need bachelors in computer science and engineering to become a front end developer all right guys thank you so much for watching this video up to the very end i really hope that i got you inspired by either pursuing a bachelor's in IT, which is probably the most popular thing for this video. Maybe I've inspired you to get a bachelor's or take a class in economics to become a product manager or a strategy manager. Or maybe I've inspired you to start your own YouTube channel and check out my course in the link down below. Thank you so much anyway for watching this video. Don't forget to smash the like button and I will see you very soon in my next videos on Silicon Valley Girl.